being honest here. The only one that's ever really scared me after he bared his teeth when I was in the stall one time was him. When she said, Ryan's coming, I go, I'm not gonna watch because I don't want to see Ryan get killed. Hey everybody, um, so we're just bringing you along here. We're headed out to a horse that has been uh, kind of attacking people <laughs> when it's loose. Um, when the horse is tagged up, I guess it's fine, so I don't think it's too extreme. But the horse is at a boarding stable, from what I understand, and if there's you know people feeding the horse, the you know the people doing chores or whatever, um, it's it's kind of a dangerous situation that it possibly could go at go at somebody with its you know with its mouth. So we're gonna go over there. We're gonna take a look at it, see if there's anything we can do um, to work with that and install, and then also kind of more proactively while we're working with the horse online. So let's go for it. I'm here. I'm here with Beth. And uh, you were telling me, uh, you came over for a lesson to work the flag the other day, and then I was just asking about your horse, and you were telling me that he can be a bit aggressive uh, when he's loose. Yep. And so can you describe, just tell me a little bit about that, what was some things that may have happened? Yeah, so unfortunately it's very unpredictable. Um, and if you have anything in your hand, doesn't matter what, he will not do anything. Um, but if you have nothing and he's naked, um, if you try to apply pressure to him and he says no and you keep going, he will push back and it apply gets a little scary. Apply pressure like doing mm. groundwork or like he's in a stall and you're wanting to move over? Just kind of like any sort of pressure. So like putting on a fly sheet, um, putting on a fly oh, okay. mask, going into a stall random. And it's like never the same thing. Okay. So it's just really unpredictable and really hard. Uh, and he does um, have signs. So like on his pasture here, we put up a sign because people will come and just try to pet them oh, off the street. So I think what we'll do, we'll start with is let's we'll just tool around with him in the in the paddock um i think i'd like to see you just go mess with his blanket stuff in there first we're gonna first figure out i want to really understand what what triggers it and what that kind of thing so we're gonna start with like what we'd call a reactive approach but eventually we want to spin it around and we want to spend more time being proactive let's see what we get into we just pretend we're not here okay you're gonna go mess with them video it. do that again Without getting bit. Yeah, so, so you see his pin yeah. is yeah. there. So a there bit. if I back off and stop, he he won't escalate. Yeah. But if I kept going. Yeah. So just walking around feeding him out yeah. here and stuff. So it's not connected to feeding time. No. It's just connected to him. But sometimes at feeding time he's mad. And I wish I could figure out the pattern, and that's part of the problem is I've okay. tried and so right now we just manage it. Okay. It's when he does that, I say okay. Okay. Yeah. But if he were to come at me, what I would do is back off, grab his halter and then correct him, which yeah. is probably too delayed, but I yeah, yeah, care about be, my life. Be, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Oh, oh, hey guys, I was just playing with my rope here. But hey, if you wanna know how to play with your rope better, consider joining my Patreon page. We have a lot of detailed videos on there. It's a great place to have me be your coach on your horsemanship journey. I think you're gonna love it a lot. We drop new videos every week. We do monthly giveaways. It's a good time over there. Go check it out. We'll leave a link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. So we need him to be a little bit more tolerant around handling him, like yeah. being able to blanket him and stuff that yeah. shouldn't trigger that. Right. Um, but you're saying he won't do that if there's a halter on. Mm -mm. Can we test that yeah. real quick? It's Is there right a halter yep, nearby? Yep, it's just, whoa, right here. So he doesn't love it. Yeah, so but he doesn't pin his ears because yeah, he knows I'll learned. yell at him. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of learned he can. Yeah. I think you've done a very good job of reading him and recognizing yeah. when to back off and when, when you push. So I think you deserve a lot of credit for getting along with him as well as things are. My, what I'm wondering to myself is just, is there anything else we can add right. to it? And that's, that's kind of what we talked yeah. about. Um, I, but I, it's like, I'm not at this point, I'm not wanting you to change anything you're doing. Okay. Like, keep doing it. It's, it's going the right direction. <laughs> um, but if we can improve this tolerance right. a little bit, that would be good too. So I think the next thing will be to see him in a stall and yeah. feeding time and, and that sort of thing. Is there anything that you feel like you would avoid with him in the stall? Touching him. So if I wanted to show you him angry, if you went in there, did not cluck, did not ask nicely first, and you just push really hard on his hip and tell him to move over, I bet he'll get angry. Okay. Because we have the lower bar in tax stalls and sometimes we have to use him as a lesson horse. Okay. Always whenever I'm can we, try, can we try that? Yeah, go for it. Um, just be safe. Yeah. <laughs> He's, you, you can duck under. He, That's what I would do. Oh, okay. And he, Ryan, he lives by your motto of do less first. Well, I think I wanted this. I wanted to yeah, mix it. Yeah, go whatever you want. Yeah, yeah get out. <laughs> yeah, here, here, here. Yeah. Okay. But you released, and so he doesn't escalate. Oh, he stopped. Yeah. But he could be about you being in his stall. Yeah, 
So there I just bopped yep, him and yep, corrected okay. him for it. I wasn't sure if he was going to kick or not. So, so what I did there uh -huh. is I tried to just do a quick bump on the nose. The nose is sensitive, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, everybody would say, never hit a horse on the head. Right, you know, yeah. that you're, you're scared. If he's coming at me with his <laughs> right. nose, if he went at me with his feet, I would have bopped him right. there, whatever yeah. he's coming at me with. So he was coming at me with his nose, so I bopped him there. Mm -hmm. And I did it with the, the handle, yeah. it, like that hard. Oh, yeah. So, well, I'm not worried. <laughs> yeah, well, so people Over, will, yeah, yeah. in the video understand. Um, the idea was to put enough pressure on that it interrupted the pattern. So the, the only reason I'm, we're doing this instead of doing it online is because we know he's right. kind of gotten some behaviors here at Liberty right. versus with the halter and line. So that's better. Yeah. Um, now, I do know from your previous lesson that he is a bit sticky mm -hmm. to, to yield to pressure. So. I'm putting the pressure on slowly, and okay. when, when you said something like, I release quickly or something? Yeah, yeah, But you released, and so he doesn't escalate. He stepped off the pressure the, right. first, the very first time. But So it's important to note, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't press, and he looked at me, and then I quit. I pressed, oh, he stepped off uh -huh. the pressure, okay. and then I quit. Gotcha, gotcha. And so I'm asking him to give uh, to steady pressure. Now, the balance here with a horse like this is you don't want to nag at him and keep, right. keep, drill, keep right. drilling it. Um, but I also know um, that you are pretty busy with them, and it's easy yeah. for you to move your feet yeah. and do things. I and so <laughs> I think one, just one thing that is probably holding this back slightly is you giving big cues. All right, so let's, um, do you happen to have a rope halter? Mm -hmm. Now, one thing too, just for the audience here watching, when you approach a horse that's any horse, this is how I'd approach them. I walk up until I'm in their space mm -hmm. and see I'm right there, he recognized me, and then I backed off, okay? So some horses have a really big bubble and they'll recognize you from way across. And by just appreciating the body language and respecting them um, kind of as an individual, they, you build rapport with them, right? So you've built a lot of rapport with him and mm -hmm. that's why you can do a lot of things that maybe other people couldn't do with right. him. Okay, because you are paying attention mm -hmm. for those different behaviors and you're aware of what's happening and he appreciates that. Yeah. So a horse, you know, no different than a person, right? Mm. If you walk in and you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna, I just saw somebody, I'm gonna go in for a big hug and you, you feel them hesitate <laughs> a little bit. And so you're like, oh. nice to see you. <laughs> or, or you do yeah. the switch to the handshake or you go with the, the half hug. You know, you're ex acknowledging that that was making them yeah. uncomfortable and you're, and you're backing off. So with him, when you're first introducing yourself to him, you know, a lot of times we call it like the sandwich effect, right? So when I'm first meeting them, I want to go in and be polite, mm. right? And, and so the first part of the lesson is like soft, hunky-dory, you know, not instant anything. By the middle of the session, now we're going to get into where this is a deeper level of conversation. And then we want to go back and end on soft stuff again. Yeah. And so the idea, now I had to instigate it a little bit in the stall, but now we're spending a little bit of time yeah. hanging out here, yeah. uh, not doing anything uh, real stressful. So the premise is we're going to go to the indoor now. This is where we add the pressure. And I'm going to try to refine yep. some of his yields on the ground. So we're going to bring up his level of um, willingness to yield from the human on the ground with the halter on as a safety net. And then um, in a perfect world, we probably would actually go to a round pen after that. Um, but I'm thinking we're going to be able to test the yields in the stall here after doing them in here. Huh. All right. So. Um, you guys have seen me use this in a lot of videos, but we're gonna do the old owning space. And he's not being pushy um, in my space at all, but when I say owning space, instead of circling him and side passing him and hind quarter, four quarter yields, we don't need you to lay down just yet. <laughs> so instead of like owning space right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk on a line through him. This is the most basic fundamental yield that you can take a horse that needs to turn loose to the human being in charge a little bit more. We saw that he has a little bit, he's sensitive, but he has a little bit of a dominant personality. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line here and I'm going to walk through him. Okay. If I was not the alpha horse, I would go around him. Mm -hmm. But because I'm the alpha horse, I can see the letter K. So I'm going to wave my stick up and down like this. He's, gonna, <laughs> he's yeah, thinking he's about rolling. <laughs> so, but he still moved off the line. <laughs> oh, but even at rolling and stuff, he's not, um, he's not thinking about me. Right. And if right. I'm the alpha horse, if I'm the leader, he should be pretty connected with the leader. I'm going to look at letter F here across the arena. I'm going to walk on a line, kind of bringing my life up. Yeah, he got off that line. 
th that's in, in horse math, that makes me the leader because <laughs> mm -hmm. he stepped off my line, you know, and I'm just going over to my hay pile or going over to the water, whatever it is. And uh, now he's in my space a little bit. Mm -hmm. Considering how dominant I've been acting towards right. him. Um, so when I have a horse that I don't trust yet, meaning they might kick or bite or do something I wasn't expecting, my rule of thumb is a, a, you know, like a stick, about a four foot long stick and the end of my arm. Mm -hmm. So he's right on the edge of it right now, okay? <laughs> when I trust the horse, my, my new boundary is this. Okay. And that boundary means if I draw them into me online or at Liberty or wherever, they can come up to the end of my arm and that from there they have to stop. Okay. If I wanna be closer to them, I can ask them to come in mm -hmm. closer or I can walk into them. Okay. Now when I walk into them, I'm still gonna be polite, offer them the horseman's handshake where you kind of fold your hand over mm -hmm. here like a horse's nose. Let them kind of meet before I touch them. So I never walk up to a horse and touch them. This is me saying hi, like, do you want to have contact? If they don't want me to touch them, I don't touch them. You know, so like there when he turns his head away, don't chase their head and try to pet them. A lot of people do that. They don't, if they don't want to be touched, like, you don't have to touch them. Now, for most horses, I would be, I'd be like, that's good enough, we're done. <laughs> I'm happy. Now, because I want him to go to the next level, I'm going to now holster this, and I'm going to just pin my ears, which means I'm using my energy. Yeah. I'm walking up to him with a serious, we're about to have a talk mm. kind of look. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna expect him to go off that. And then I, I use one motion with the, the okay. flag, okay? You see uh, that? Ah, yeah. So he walked off my line just from me puffing up my mm -hmm. feathers as I walk through there, you know? And. It's okay if a person has to have some sort of movement to help them mentally go there. But it's like, maybe, ah, it's like you could be like laying in your bed in like a, a sleeping position, but like ready to jump out of bed. Yeah. Or you could be laying there about to go to bed, about to fall asleep. Yep. Okay, so my point is I could be in a passive position here, but my head is up, my shoulders are back. <laughs> so he was delayed, so, so the stick came up. But you can see, my point is, I do less first, yep. and, and that's what's winning, okay? Now I'm gonna get a little bit more specific, okay? These are the only two yields we're gonna do. And another little point I'll add to this lesson is, when you wanna make a behavior change with something, you wouldn't do these things, you, you wouldn't wanna do 10 things today, do right. two, yep. one or two things, and then put them away. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't wanna add riding, right. you wouldn't <laughs> wanna add other things. Just, if you want this lesson to stick strong Marinate. just do that yeah. so like for those of you at home if you have an issue like saddling or bridling or trailer loading whatever it's just work on that mm -hmm. don't don't work on that and five other things put do that put them away you can go get them out again later yeah <laughs> but really let those lessons sink in so we know that he has some issue with um his uh hindquarters be, being asked to move his hindquarters now we'll just pet him with the flag <laughs> And also, I didn't come out and do a lot of confidence building with the flag. I went straight to mm -hmm. adding pressure because we identified him as being a more sticky horse yeah. um, that was easy to move. So we could just, you could experiment a little bit with some of these moves. And whenever you apply steady pressure, you're going to hold this. <laughs> and when he steps off of it, notice it didn't follow uh, him. Yep. Yep. So I'm going to have you do this walk the line yep. exercise. Slow, wave it slowly. Good. Did you feel yourself wanting to go towards him? Yep. <laughs> so you, she took one little side pass step left and that's that also means your focus was not on the target your focus was him yep don't focus on him so okay. focus on me walk slowly 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 so you're taking big oh, old steps I'm now out. bring the stick up and whoosh, yep walk slow baby steps <laughs> Now, did you feel how he barely <laughs> moved off the yep. line? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, th so this is also something you need to work on. Yeah. I have a strong intention, a strong focus. When you're walking, you're walking with like a lot of energy, but you're kind of like smiling. Yeah. You know, like, I smile. We're walking on the line and, <laughs> you know, and he's not taking it very serious. So what I want you to focus is taking that energy that's kind of, around you mm -hmm. and f laser focusing it from between your eyes and your belly button. Lift the stick. 
Because even with how close you got to him before you moved the stick, told me you weren't, you need to put that bubble out there. Like, if I could give it yeah. a try here, just walk yeah. with me here. Oh. So I'm walking on the line. Do you see how much more space he's given me? Yeah. <clears throat> because I'm, I'm putting my bubble out there a little bit bigger. So he gave us a lot of room. You got very close to him before you moved it. I would have, I was like, I'm like, I dare you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, I mean, it's like a game, you know? And it's like, when I pull that trigger, like, it's going to wind up, wind up, wind up, wind up. You know? He's moving And move it quickly. Yeah, he is. <laughs> so let's say getting him to walk off that line, doing mm -hmm. that exercise, is worth 10 points. Mm -hmm. If you walk the line and you're waving the stick hard, and you had to touch him with it three times, and then he finally walked off, you got one point right. out of ten. Yeah. You got one out of ten. If you can walk on that line, and you just look, and you take a step, and that horse steps off that line calmly, quiet, quietly, puts their ears forward looking at you, that's a ten, you got ten points. So what I'm insinuating here is you've been getting like six or seven points yeah. out of all the things you've been doing with him. And to take it to that next level where you're getting the eight or nine or yeah. ten points, it's not more pressure, it's you doing less first, yep. giving him more time to make a choice. And I think that will translate to some of these other areas. But in the stall, you know, trying to bite when moving them, that's what I want to take a look yeah. at. So next thing we'll do is we'll head in there. All right. So now, theoretically, this is now a test. Okay. <laughs> Everything should be hunky-dory in there now. But if it's not, then that, if it's not hunky-dory in there, then what that tells us is it is more strongly connected to the stall, the stall. than it is training yeah. out there. I just would like him to know I want two eyes, not the hindquarters. Okay. And that's what we got here. So watch, if we step to him now. I got one ear, so if I back off here, then we'll get yeah. two eyes. But you can see he, that's not the first thought. His first <laughs> thought is not to give us two, yeah, no. two eyes. And so this is, just a, this is part of the stall training that okay. I'm talking about. It's like, working with him basically at liberty, but he has to understand pressure better. And so that's it's like, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, he has to understand pressure better in order to not get defensive. Okay. But that's what happened is he had some things done to him mm -hmm. that caused him to get defensive, and it just hasn't been fully resolved with the arena riding. Okay. He needs more, some of the more of the handling in here. Yeah. So it's just a few little things. Okay. Um, but I feel like it's all doable. Okay, cool. I do, I just. But more, one of the most important things I'd like you to work on with him in here is just like put a little bit of pressure on him. Mm -hmm. And there he start. He thought about looking at me, okay. and then I retreated. We're we're actually really close, so I'll just finish it here <laughs> just for the sake of it. Um, next time he looks away, watch. So I'll step to him. He's starting to think towards me. So if I take away, I don't know if you can see that he's barely moving. Um, but what I'm looking for is when I approach to get two eyes. Okay. Not no. after I release to get mm -hmm. two eyes. So that was a step in the right direction because his hindquarters mm -hmm. went away, and then the nose came in. But he had a block about this because he's right. trying to be defensive. He's trying to think away. That's a pranimal thought. Yeah. So in the stall, he has a little bit stronger of a pranimal thought to it. So what I'm looking for to have kind of ha have it all come together is when I step to his hindquarters, the nose. You see him licking chew? Mm -hmm. He's just getting more Relaxing, comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so watch it looked away. There it is. You see what I'm yeah. talking about? He looked <laughs> he at me before yeah. I retreated. Yep. So he's learning now two eyes is the answer. Before, the only time he would look at somebody with two eyes was when he was he pinning his ears to bite. Oh. So we've, we've actually come full circle now with this whole thing. So just a bunch of little things. Does that make sense? Yeah. See how I'm getting that now before yeah. I release? Yeah. That's the difference. So so I'm very happy with that. But cool. just messing with him a little bit with some of these things in here would be good. Okay. Um, yeah. And that's all very doable stuff. Yeah. Yeah, very doable. <laughs> so is there anything you want to share that was kind of like a highlight for you or t something that you're taking away? Um, I'm just super excited that he's not genuinely aggressive. Um, you know, I always just, he's safe with me, but... We are a big barn, and so I just get nervous that people are judging me for keeping him. But there's just some holes in there, and so I'm excited. Yeah. We've had five years together. We've gotten this far, so maybe you're the next doing, five will be cool. You're doing a fantastic <laughs> job with him. Yeah, you definitely need to keep up what you're doing. 
I mean, I always gotten curious. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people would think after seeing me tap him on the nose with a mm -hmm. stick, oh, he's going to be afraid of you. And it, no, he feels... This horse likes... He actually, yeah. he likes me more mm -hmm. now because he... He appreciates how much I understood him and That's what he was doing. Absolutely. I want you, if you can just see how interactive he's mm -hmm. being with me now, yep. if this was a bad experience for him, he'd be hiding in the corner of a stall, not over here coming to say hi and yeah. like, what are we still doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. There's a couple little adjustments there for you, but um, awesome. thanks for having us out and, yeah. and helping us. Thank it was good to work you. With you. That's a wrap. <laughs>